Welcome, welcome back to Raw Food. How are you, kind friend, since your return to the West Coast from the East Coast? What have you been up to? Working, grinding, and uh, enjoying the change in the weather um, and enjoying this uh, Halloween that just passed. What about you? Oh, yeah. How was your Halloween? Well, I'm a mellow Halloween person. I never got to celebrate Halloween as a kid. Me either. Yeah, because my mom would, you know, being super religious and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So uh, I enjoyed it. We had a really good time. Um, what did you do? Well, we went to the the Cal versus Oregon game. So that was cool, even though oh, it, wasn't nice. really, yeah, it wasn't really Halloween themed. But um, got to meet some other Cal alumni. Got to catch up with some folks that I haven't seen in a long time uh, just by just randomly running into them. Then after that, just hung out with some friends and stuff. It was a relatively low key Halloween uh, compared to the Halloween parties that I typically go to, but uh, it was still a good time. I've done quite a few of the Halloween parades in LA. I think I did one once in the Castro, but my Halloweening has mellowed. I don't trust. I don't trust people right now, and I certainly don't trust them running around in face masks with fake butcher knives in their hands. Not doing it. Looks like the purge. Not fucking with it. And I'm not opening my door and giving candy to a bunch of kids who are taller than me with more bass in their voice. Fuck out of here. Get a job. (laughs) Hell no. These kids are big, bro. (laughs) You might be eight years old, but you're five foot 11. You ain't getting no fucking candy. Huh? And getting no candy. Yo, that's funny. Also, like kids could could be using that as a pretense to stick people up. I would if I was a degenerate kid. Hell yeah. Halloween night would be Christmas for me. Yeah. Rob everybody. Yeah. Why not? There are some interesting videos of Karen's taking an entire like bucket of Halloween candy that's been left out because that's what people do now. Instead of like opening the door for people, they just leave it out there on their front porch and they hope people just take one. But now that everyone has like a ring it's camera America. or yeah, a doorbell camera. You know, it's a bunch of middle-aged white women that have been caught literally taking the entire thing, pouring it in their kids, you know, pillow sack or whatever, and then walking off. Trash. But sounds pretty American, so I can't say I'm surprised. Yeah, not at all. I mean, this was the country that was beating each other in the head with sticks over toilet paper. So are are we shocked that people were stealing the Snickers? No, this is America. This is how we act. Not to mention, the, the average shoplifter is a middle-aged white woman. It is Thank not you. a black or brown person. Repeat that for the seats in the back. Yeah. The the statistics show that the average shoplifter is a middle-aged white woman. May God forgive them. I never will. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, my friend. How's work? Work is cool. It's just taxing, uh, but it is what it is. Can't complain. There's a lot of people that have been getting laid off here and there in tech. Um, yes. What's happening? Why are people getting laid off in tech? I thought tech was the one industry that if you knew what to do with a keyboard, you were making money. There are a bunch of companies that were not profitable in the latter part of this super cycle. Okay. That now are finding it hard to raise money. Hmm. And so they're either shutting down entirely or in an, in an effort to make themselves profitable or get closer to profitability, they're cutting people. Okay. Or, or they're either cutting a staff, you know, people that have already been hired, or they're in a hiring freeze. Okay. Or on top of that, they'll fire people that like literally just got hired like a week ago or something like that. Hmm. Some have even canceled internships, and that's really shitty because you know some kids have have turn down other internship offers only to find out, you know, this most recent summer that, hey, that internship that you accepted back in December of last year, that summer internship of, for summer 2020, uh, 2022 is not there for you. And now it's too late because the the internship recruiting is ridiculously. Yeah. You have to apply there. months in advance, right? Yeah, you have to apply in December of the year prior for that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes even earlier than that, sometimes, I mean, that that shit actually kicks off in like September. The internships, especially at these, you know, prestige places to start your career, the top consulting firms, the top investment banks, the top tech companies, those internships are harder to get than the actual full-time jobs. Right. Yeah. Are they paid? 
yes, they're paid. They tend to pay well, but, and, and, you know, if you have one of those name brand internships on your resume, then it's going to really help you when it comes to getting a high paying job out of college. So people tend to stress out about them a lot. And so, you know, for example, Facebook slash meta, like they cut some interns in, in Ireland, I believe. And it was like, yo, I, I had all these other internship offers. I turned them down because Facebook was a better brand name. And now I don't have, I thought I was going to have Facebook on my resume and now I don't. So what's going on with Facebook? Why are they suddenly acting like they don't have any money? They don't know. Oh, well, people are spending less money to advertise um, because generally speaking, with the inflation and with the way that the Fed is combating inflation by raising interest rates, businesses in general feel uncertain about the future. And so they don't want to uh, spend money. Got it. Yeah. And the tax hike didn't didn't help, but that wasn't like the main thing that crushed everything. A giant fly just landed on my screen. I'm going to try to kill it. I've been trying to kill this fly all day, but he's been all all about. Because that fly is a thug, bro. Yeah, this fly, this fly is a thug. This fly has been in the yard. This fly looks like he's been working out. Like, seriously. <laughs> he's been in the yard. I feel like, I, I hope I got that motherfucker. This thing is fat. For real. Wow. You've been eating good in your house. Yeah. And like I could I could go we could do a whole episode on like what's going on in the economy. The Fed literally just raised interest rates again in an effort. Yeah, to and absolutely inflation. cooled the housing market, too. Yeah, it, it's cooled off the housing market. And yeah, so if, if you're an unprofitable tech startup that was relying on VC money, it's harder for you to raise money right now um, because you were the, the revenue that you were getting probably was coming from other un unprofitable tech startups. And and the money that was your runway is coming from VCs that are like, mm, we'd rather throw our money at, you know, established startups that are about to go public or just hold on to our cash right now. So, yeah, it's it's harder out there. What strange times we're living in. Mm -hmm. Well, what's Very interesting also times. is in California, Gavin Newsom wants to fight inflation with inflation, which is interesting with with inflationary policies. So like. He wants to give everybody money as a like gas rebate type thing, like to help with high gas prices in California on people's taxes. They can, they're, they're, he's going to push more money to people for that. Mm -hmm. Like a tax rebate. Um, it, it might even come in the form of just a direct check. I'm not 100% sure, but you're throwing money at the problem of inflation when. Right when we were talking about, oh, my God, high gas prices. Oh, my God, high inflation. California just instituted a new tax on gas. If you wanted to do something about high gas prices, the wow. first thing you should have done is say, let's not do that new tax on gas that we planned on doing. And maybe let's roll back some of the existing gas taxes. My God. And, and gas is already super expensive in California. Isn't it about $6 a gallon? Yes. That's insane, man. Yeah. But I, I think Gavin Newsom is trying to buy votes because he's clearly running for president. So he'd rather frame it instead of a tax cut, because that sounds like Republicans, even though this is a, a tax cut for regular people. I, I think Democrats can run on that. Um, but instead of that, he I think he thinks the political calculus is to, hey, I did a gas tax. I, I did a gas stimulus type thing or whatever. So we'll, we will see how that works out. We can do a whole breakdown on, on what that field of candidates looks like in the future, as well as, you know, midterm elections coming up. Midterm elections are coming up and it looks like finally, for the love of God, um, Warnock is pulling ahead of Herschel Walker as he should from a sheer intelligence standpoint. This is politics aside. We need to stop voting for idiots, mm -hmm. period. I don't care what party they're in. If you are not knowledgeable about the role you're stepping into and your life seems to be in shambles, you are not to be considered an eligible candidate. I don't know why we're not all in agreement on that. But he was good at football 30 years ago. Right. And that's wonderful for football. I don't know why that qualifies you to be in Congress. So I'm hoping that the distance that Warnock has gained over Mr. Walker remains steady. 
And again, for me, you know, it's not a political party preference. It is an intellectual savvy preference. And I hope the pendulum swings in the direction of brain power. Yeah. And let's let's break it down, because someone pointed out that, you know, Herschel Walker, black people specifically should feel insulted about this, or at least I do. I, I don't I don't I don't want to tell other people how to feel. But this guy is the spitting image of what white people in Georgia think of black people. Athletic. Absolutely. History, history of aggressive Absolutely. behavior. Deadbeat dad who didn't take care of, you know, all of the other kids that he had outside of wedlock. Okay. Has issues with violence and, and aggression. Uh, I yep. guess I kind of mentioned that before. Um, barely literate and clearly not very smart. Oh. And they believe that we are all, or at least enough of us, will vote for this guy because he was good at football, that that will help put them over the top because there's guaranteed a whole bunch of white folks that are just going to vote for him just because he's a Republican. And, and just all the Republicans in, in Georgia are going to vote lockstep for whoever the, the nominee is. But they think so little of us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Agreed. I concur. That candidate should have been an insult. Yeah. It should have been insult to Christians. It should have been an insult to the people who claim to support family values. It should have been an insult against people who are truly patriotic and truly believe in the power of voting. It should be insulting to anyone who has children to hold this person up as someone who should be a representative in any way, shape, or form of what the people stand for. There is no reason to accept candidates that are unqualified of any race or gender. We mm -hmm. need to start being smart and stop leaning into identity to pick people who aren't even necessarily speaking for us. Yeah. And on top of that, he he clearly is just going to do what he's told. Right. And he's a liar. Right. Now, there are plenty of intellectual black conservatives that are not famous Heisman winning football players that right. you could have went and got. You could have got Absolutely. A, a Ben Thomas Carson Sound. Right. type. You could Thomas have gotten, of the world. Yeah. Exactly. You you could have gotten one of those. Right. Uh, Alan Keyes comes to mind, who ran against Barack Obama in Chicago for Senate and lost. But you could right. have got, went and found a black conservative. Who's not an idiot. Thank you. The idiot part is the insult part. It's the, it's almost the joke. It's the tongue in cheek part. Let's Isn't wheel out either a dancer, a, a, a rapper, or a football player, and they'll come. We should we should all be insulted by that. We should all be insulted by that. Yes, exactly. Speaking of rappers, uh, takeoff got killed over a damn dice game, and footage also reveals that the argument that sparked this thing was over some basketball shit uh, in Houston. Yet another rapper getting killed over nothing. Uh, the video that I saw of the fight, they started swinging, and in less than 10 seconds, shots were getting fired. This went from zero to 100 immediately. Because nobody can take an ass beating anymore like a man. Period. Nobody fights anymore. Everything is a duel to the death. Nobody can just throw down the hands. One person wins, one person loses. It happens. Shake it off. Because everybody is too busy being concerned about their image. I don't want to be that sucker on World Star getting beat up. All mm -hmm. right. Well, now one person's dead, one person's going to prison, and two families lost a child. So if that's the win, then I guess we have very different definitions of winning. But you kept it real and got your lip back for getting embarrassed. So thumbs up, bro. Yeah. Right. You kept it real. Shameful. Shameful. We yeah. have to do better. We have to do better. Now, let's talk about the idea that this was an accident. Uh, someone someone who was at this party. This, so this was a Halloween party at a bowling alley. And the person throwing the party was Jazz Prince. That's uh, Jeffrey or Jeff Prince's son. Uh, Mr. Prince owns rap -a -Lot Records. He's a Houston boss. He's, he's, he's a Houston legend. Signed a whole bunch of rappers out of there. Okay. So Jazz Prince is hip-hop royalty. He's like a hip-hop prince, if you will. And he throws this party. So, you know, you got rappers there. You got regular Houston niggas there. And then on top of that, you have, you know, groupies there as well. So one of these groupies at the party posts a video saying it was an accident. It was an accident. Da, da, da. 
But what they what they were alluding to wasn't, oh, the gun accidentally <laughs> went off. They were alluding to the idea that takeoff is not who the person who did the shooting, uh, that's not who they were aiming at. I have a problem with that. You don't get to change the definition of the word accident to make your make you feel better. Okay. An accidental shooting is when the gun accidentally goes off, maybe you dropped it or whatever. But if I take out a gun and I point it into a crowd of people and I pull right. the trigger several times, pointing it at that crowd. Right. I, I intentionally meant to kill somebody. I may have accidentally killed the wrong person. That means that means that doesn't make it an accidental shooting. That just means you missed, nigga. Right. <laughs> Facts. You missed. Right. It wasn't an accident. I hear you. Correct. Uh, speaking of other rappers, Kanye is no longer a billionaire because he uh, did Kanye things. Uh, we didn't talk about it as it was happening, but I guess everyone who has a podcast has to do an obligatory Kanye take. What say you? Is he even invited to the barbecue anymore? Or is he the guy showing up with the potato salad with the raisins in it? I said a long I mean, time ago, Kanye is a Kardashian. Who's supporting him at this point? Is the black community support who? Who's his demographic at this point? Who's his clique? He has a bit of a cult of personality where anything he does, people are going to be like, you just don't get it. Kanye's a genius. What he's really trying to say is da 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 da. Like, yeah, but who thinks that? Who, who's, who's sharing that narrative? Hype beasts, edge lords, people who want to sound, who think just by being contrarian and, and supporting Kanye, that makes them cool just because they're being contrarian. I'm okay with a contrarian opinion, but if you're being contrarian just for the sake of doing so, just because you think that makes you interesting, that's that's kind of dumb. True. That's really kind of dumb. It doesn't really interest me, to tell you the truth. I, I'm not a big follower of him. I'm not for or against him. I don't think he's moving the needle for the community. But having said that, I don't really consider him someone who's been part of the community for quite some time. So I don't expect him to do anything more or less than someone who doesn't identify as being part of the community anyway. So it's his behavior is pretty much in sync with someone who obviously identifies as something other than black. Interesting. That's, that's a good take. Why do we have such high expectations of this guy? Right. Where are these expectations? I don't understand where we get expectations of celebrities from in the first place. I don't expect people who are celebrities to also be theologians or to be intellectuals, or I expect them to be good at what their craft is. That doesn't make them a great anything else. I don't mistake a, a basketball player for a great neurosurgeon. I don't mistake a neurosurgeon for a sculptor. I don't expect these people who have a, an expertise in a certain craft to be great at anything else, nor does their opinion in those other areas really influence me that much. Because it's just an opinion if they're not a professional in the craft anyway. So what do I care what celebrities think about politics or religion or unless it's part of their craft? If it's just them speaking on it, it's it's just an opinion. Why do we have to give it so much power? That's a very good point. It, it kind of goes back to just Americans and our obsession right. with celebrity worship. Yes. And just worship of something. We need to be worshiping something at all times. Other than just being smart. Yeah. There's no reason why Kanye's opinion should matter any more this than much. anyone else's when he's talking about anything outside of music and right. fashion and the music business and the fashion business. Right. Sure. He speaks on that. I'm all ears. Everything else. I'm like, eh, who cares? Yeah. And just because somebody cares doesn't mean it should have any power. Right. The unfortunate piece is that it it kind of does in the sense that, you know, as soon as some people started started saying, hey, what Kanye said was anti-Semitic or whatever. Now, suddenly they start getting trolled by just an army of Kanye stands. For example, the Holocaust Museum in L.A. offered Kanye a tour. Kanye said no, publicly turned it down and said, you know, I'm going to go tour. I don't know, Planned Parenthood or whatever he because he's also, you know, pro-life, he's he's anti-choice. Um, and then out of nowhere, they, they always get a little bit of hate mail, but out of nowhere, all these Kanye stands started trolling them with all kinds of anti-Semitic shit once people found out that he had interacted with them. And so that that's the problem of this person's platform and what they've done. 
Like, fuck, dude. And obviously, we don't support anti-Semitism by, you know, by any means. And I believe what he was saying was not only incorrect, but like he's attributing it to Jewish people when what he's talking about is simply a, a capitalist perspective of things. Any capitalist, whether they are Jewish, Goyim, whether they, regardless of how they identify religiously, ethnically, right. racially, whatever. Right. If they're and, capitalists, they behave in a similar fashion. Exactly. If they're capitalists, they do the things that he's like, you know, trying to expose in air quotes, Lee or Cohen for doing when Lee or Cohen's like, yeah, if I think I'm going to make a buck, I'm going to I'm going to sign this artist who talks about shooting black people or whatever, instead of this conscious rapper yeah. who, who I don't think is going to make make me a buck. That's right. Well, because there's an audience for it. Right. There is also the supply and demand aspect of it. If you have an audience that's demanding it, then somebody is going to put it out there. Thank it's you. the audience's responsibility to repudiate things that we claim to not support so that it is not monetized. If we don't, then someone's going to monetize it. And whose fault is that? You hating the player, you hating the game. Exactly. Nobody forced y'all to like that stuff. Right. I don't listen to anything that glorifies killing Black people anymore. It's something I've made a conscious decision to do. If I hear a good old classic gangster rap, do I change the station? No. Am I co-signing the nonsense coming out now? Absolutely not. And there's something to be said about the classics. Yeah. Well, especially back then, because these folks were talking about their own experiences, whereas a lot of folks now are just making that stuff up. And right. then they get pulled into gang shit later on because they feel like they have to keep up a front. Validated and then now. Or right. you know it they're getting shot at. Right. Even though they grew up middle class. Yeah. Or even worse, they feel like they have to affiliate with a gang in order to help their rap career. Like what right. Takashi 6 9 did. He was not right. a blood. He went and found the nine trait bloods and, and was like, Hey, I'm gonna put you in the video with y'all. And you know, I'm going to help put your gang on and I'm going to be part of your gang, blah, blah, blah. And that's going to help me look like I'm this authentic thug that I'm not. Right. Yeah. It's, it's fucked up. Let's move on to the topic that we want to discuss, unless you had any other hot tops you wanted to touch on. No, go for it. I mean, there's there's just quite a few things, I think, overall going on in the world that broad strokes we should possibly mention. I would say uh, one of those things is last month, Egypt called for the return of the Rosetta Stone and other ancient ar- artifacts. Uh, thousands of Egyptians are demanding the repatriation of the Rosetta Stone from the British Museum back to its home country. So for all of those nationalists and patriots out there who were always concerned about looting and stealing, I hope they're the first ones signing up to write the British government and tell them that they need to give back the artifacts to the various countries the British Empire stole it from over their centuries of pillaging, raping, and stealing from other countries. Yes, indeed. Moving on. Uh, An ex-police officer named James Brennan was charged in shooting at a teenager who was sitting eating a burger in a parking lot. So apparently there is going to be a case with regarding that situation. For those who are unfamiliar, a San Antonio police officer was charged with two counts of aggravated assault for shooting and almost killing a teenager who was eating a hamburger in his car in a parking lot because he thought that this was a teenager that he had pulled over or attempted to pull over on another evening and had gotten away. Is that the correct? Am I uh, yes. telling the story correctly, Jay? I'm doing yep. it off the cuff. So um, I'm glad I'm happy to report that that officer has been charged. What say you on that situation? I'm surprised that this officer was charged in the state of Texas, but this kid got shot, I believe, five times. Yeah, he, he opened not the, the person that he thought he was. This officer mm-hmm. was new on the job and apparently did not realize that car manufacturers actually make, you know, multiple versions of the car that they make. So it is possible that, you know, the same make, model and color of a car that you interacted with might be out there and might have nothing right. to do with that interaction. Especially right. in a city like San Antonio, which is not a small town. Yep. Shameful. Absolutely. Shameful. Out of pocket. Uh, but at least they seem to be moving ahead on a case, whereas a lot of the other cases, the police officers are either still on duty or are on paid leave, and the cases seem to be stagnant. But in this case, they seem to be moving forward with it. So we'll see how that plays out. In other news, 
OPEC has supported the decision for the oil cartels to cut production by 2 million barrels per day of oil starting in the month of November. And because of it, the White House said that they are looking to reevaluate their partnership with Saudi Arabia. Oh, is that what it took? And more interestingly, in the science world, NASA was able to interrupt the course of an asteroid using a technology called DART that now uh, they've been able to use it to throw off the course of meteors or asteroids. So if any are ever headed towards the planet, we will not be in grave danger as we once thought, which is a major accomplishment. And kudos to the NASA team who was behind that. And also the CDC has okay booster shots for kids between the ages of five and 12. That's been approved by the FDA. Last month, the Food and Drug Administration has given the green light for elementary school age kids to get the updated booster doses, one made by Pfizer for five to 11 year olds and a version from Moderna for those as young as six years old. That's very interesting. I also saw that there was some court case in New York that says people that got laid off because they yes. rejected the vaccine are now going to get back pay. Yes. Just for New there York was a State. Court case. Yes. Now, isn't go- that's going to get appealed to a higher court, is it not? Or is it already? I would assume it will get appealed. Um, I don't know how much support it would get. And in an election cycle, that's not going to be the theme that's going to come up. Interesting, because I believe that if this does happen, then the government is screwing over all those companies Mm -hmm. because they were all told you cannot be sued for this. You are indemnified from being sued for wrongful termination for this. That's what all these companies were told. So if, if this goes through and it goes to this, you know, illegitimate conservative Supreme Court and they rule in favor of it, that's going to screw over a whole bunch of corp companies, both corporate and small about some small companies didn't didn't lay people off if you were small you probably you maybe didn't have to but we'll right. which see is why, how that out. which I is agree. why i think to your point the conservative courts won't vote in favor of it they'll vote on the side of businesses interesting okay i know but so what bothers me is the the conservative courts might vote on the side of anti-vaxxers because because unfortunately the 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 conservative movement, while it does support companies, they also rail against woke companies, right? Mm -hmm. And they they have definitely thrown open the door and welcomed in uh, anti-vaxxers. Not to get into vax versus anti-vax right here, I do believe maybe those folks should be able to get their jobs back. Mm -hmm. But in terms of giving them back pay, that's Mm, that, that needs to be seen. That's the sticky part, not the getting the job back, the back pay part. Who's yeah. really accountable for that? That's very sticky. And if you're a small to medium sized company, that could fuck with you. Yeah. Agreed. That'll be mm-hmm. an interesting case to follow. And it will be even more interesting to see if it is appealed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, so we wanted to talk about entitlement. Oh. General sense of entitlement, because it's getting on both of our nerves. You had some examples. I had some examples. I really loved your examples. Please. I really loved your example because your situation puts you in a prickly situation. Speak to it. Okay. Please understand who these people that I'm talking about do not matter. The idea is what matters. Right. So I know a person who has worked at a place for a while and they wanted to get a promotion. A new guy can't comes in and also uh, has done a very, very good job and wanted to get that same promotion. The new guy is a white guy. Uh, I believe uh, he's also um, LGBTQ. Okay. And the other person is a black woman. The black woman seemed to believe that she was entitled to this job because she had been there longer, even though the other person was better at the job and learned the job faster. And when put to the test uh, of their technical skills, one person did extremely well, um, outperformed the test, 
and another person kind of failed it. And so that's what it came down to. And, and the other person was very, uh, very upset about it. They believe that the test didn't apply to them uh, or didn't apply to the role. But and, it did. But it did. Because you saw the test because you wrote it. Yeah, I wrote the test. And so the idea that like this person was just supposed to get this job didn't really that that was that was interesting to me. Okay. Um, but when objectively put out there of, to to determine whether or not they have the skills, it turned out this other person you know had the skills. It doesn't mean this person won't be qualified for uh, such a role later on. I'm always happy to help. Um, but the the attitude, the sense of entitlement was interesting to me. Um, and what did you feel the entitlement was based on being a woman, being a black person or a combination of both? A combination and also having been there the longest. Seniority. OK, yeah, a, a bit of seniority. And I think they thought I was going to help them out. Mm. But that's just speculation. OK. Yeah. But yeah. What, uh, what do you have to say? I know certain things you can't uh, you can't talk about with your examples, but um, what can you share? So I can share the sense of entitlement uh, story based on a conversation I had with students because I am currently teaching in a public school, um, a science class in a high school. And one of the things I discussed in class are current events. One of those current events was the firing of an NYU science professor because a, a minority group of students did poorly on the first test and felt that the course should have been watered down, complained to the school, not realizing it would result in the professor's firing, which it did. So I brought that up to my students to see what their thoughts were. And interestingly enough, n the majority of the students in my class thought the, the students were wrong and thought it was out of pocket for them to question someone who was so seasoned. So I say to them, but yet some of you have done this. Some of you have gone home, complained to your parents, and they've emailed the school about me, about other teachers. You've done this. See how easy it is to judge other people when the shoe's on the other foot? So you saw how immature and how entitled it was for those students to do that. Because basically, their parents at NYU, it appears, based on the information the students and I discussed, was that by sheer default of the tuition being paid to the college, their kids should be passing those classes. Now, if that's not a sense of entitlement on cocaine, I don't know what is, but it speaks to the shift in the parents' mentality in parenting, which has now raised a society of kids who think everybody gets a trophy and that everybody should just graduate medical school because you feel like going. And now you have kids not being diligent, not doing the work, and then the entitlement is bleeding into everyday life. So teachers, we get maybe 30 minutes for lunch. And now you have kids coming to your classroom during your 30 minutes of lunch because the library is not open for them to sit in or they're not allowed to leave the campus so they can't go outside or they don't have any friends so they don't want to sit alone in the cafeteria. And now the very 30 minutes you get to yourself, you're now sharing with kids who think, oh, your classroom's open and of course you want to spend it with me. So what are you going to do? Be that jerk of a teacher who throws the kid out of a classroom? You're going to suck it up. So most of the time I suck it up. And if I can, I try to leave the campus just so I can get that time to myself. But this is what's happening is that we're breeding people who think they deserve things surely for existing. Indeed. That is very say, interesting. Right. And there's not to say that people shouldn't be trained and there's a way to move people up the ladder. And I don't think we are being diligent enough about understanding that people need to be taught things. All of us were taught to hold the spoon once. People need to learn how to use computers, how to use different languages, different programs. People need to be taught it. Everybody assumes everybody's learning it off Google, but that is just not the case. You can't learn everything that way. And people learn in different ways. Some are auditory, some are visual, some are interactive. You can't just throw everybody on Google. That's like throwing everybody on a standardized test and going, everyone who doesn't do well is an idiot. That's not fair. And it's short-sighted. But the sense of entitlement is bleeding into everyday life, which is making people suck as a whole which is forcing people into, into their corners and making them retreat from engaging with anybody at all. That's why everybody's getting fatter and the TVs are getting bigger, but our brains are getting smaller. Mm. On this episode of Raw Food.